All right, we're going to look at section 2.5, linear independence. And we'll first take a look at some of the goals. I'll give some motivation for why we have a strange definition for this uh, idea, and we'll formally define it, and then we'll talk about it in uh, geometric terms. So in terms of our goals, when this is done, you should be able to take a set of vectors and decide whether or not they're linearly independent or linearly dependent. I give you a set of vectors, you should be able to figure out which ones you can write as a linear combination of the others. And finally, you should be able to relate how we're using row echelon form of a matrix to determine uh, whether or not a set of vectors are linearly independent. Okay, so I'm going to start off with this uh, idea that we're going to look at later in the course. Later in the course, we're going to ask if I give you a set of vectors, can I use those vectors to write to ex express another vector in, as a linear combination of those things. So you should be able to immediately look at this and decide that if I've got this vector v1, v2, and v3, can I write this thing in terms of x1 times v1 plus x2 times v2 plus x3 times v3 and you should be able, be able to immediately look at this since, since there's all these zeros. x1 has to be minus 3, and there's zeros there. x2 has to be 2, and likewise x3 has to be 4. Okay. Unfortunately, things aren't always quite that easy. Suppose I have these three vectors, and I want to ask, can I take this vector and write it as a linear combination so that I'm going to have some x1 times v1 plus x2 times v2, plus x3 times v3, where this is v1, this is v2, and this is v3. Okay, so this is going to be, we want to figure out what that number is, what that number is, and what that number is. And again, you should be able to look at this and say, oh, let's see, 4 has to be 0 plus 0 plus c, so c is 4. 2 is going to be 0 plus b plus c. You already know C, so you can find B. So minus 3 is going to be A plus B plus C. At this point, we know B and C, so we can calculate A. So we can do that. But notice, so these are three equations. I can also think about this as linear system for A, B, and C. So A times 1 plus B times 1 plus C times 1 is minus 3. And then let's see, 2 is going to be 0a plus b, oops, sorry, plus b plus c. And then likewise here, we're going to have 4 is going to be 0a plus 0b plus c. And so now I can put this in an augmented matrix and use this to figure out what a, b, and c is. So in fact, if we write it like this, now we're very fortunate here. Notice this is already in reduced sorry, it's row echelon form, right? Everything to the left of the pivots is zero, everything below the pivots is zero. So I can immediately get this in terms of C is four, I can solve for B, solve for A, everything is fine. And notice, I can do that no matter what numbers are there. So if you give me any X, Y, and Z, I can solve that. Okay, that's something we're gonna explore later on in the course. Before we do that, though, we're going to ask a different question. Another question we're going to ask is, instead of looking at what's happening in terms of writing any vector in terms of those, the first thing we're going to ask is, can I take any of those vectors in that set and write it in terms of the other? Okay. So let's look at an example here. Suppose I've got these three vectors. So I've got v1, v2, and v3. And if you just if you stare at this, you can eventually see that, oh, I can take V3 and I can write it in terms of V1 and V2. In particular, because there's a zero there, I gotta have what two times V2. And then once you get that, so if I take two times V2, I can have two times one plus one will give me the one. So that's one way I can write this in terms of the others. It's not the only way, and if you uh, look at this, you could probably figure out other ways to do this if you started with a V1 or V2. 
But the thing is, if you have more vectors, you don't necessarily know which ones are going to work in advance. Okay. So for example, suppose I have three vectors. I've got v1, v2, v3, and v4. Um, can I take these and write them in terms of the others? So you could probably look at this again and say, oh, if I take v3, I could probably write it as 3 times v4. And now, let's see, I'm going to have 3 times 2, because there's a 0 there. You can probably figure out what I need there. And then with what's left over, you could probably figure out what's left in v1. So you could probably do that with this one as well. But again, once, this, once we start getting up into bigger dimensions, so we have more entries here and more vectors, this can start getting more difficult. So it's not always quite so straightforward. The thing to notice here is this. So, so what do I have? I said I can take v1, v2, v3, and v4. I don't necessarily know in advance which of these vectors I can write in terms of the others. Right? It may be that only v1 and v2 are related, and v3 and v4 are not. And so I don't know in advance which one I can stop and solve for. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to write this as a general linear combination. And if there is a way for me to write one of these in terms of the other, so for example, if I could write v3 in terms of the other, that would be the same thing as saying, oh, I could put a 1 there, and then I could figure out numbers here and here and here that will end up adding to 0, because if that were the case, I could solve this equation for v3 by subtracting everything over. Okay. So I'm going to just write this as a general form here, and I'm going to ask, can I find values for x1, x2, x3, and x4 that will add up to 0, where not every one of these numbers has to be 0. right? Because if I put a 0 there, 0 there, and a 0 there, and a 0 there, that's going to work fine. I want to know, is it possible for me to do that so that one of these, for example that one, is not 0. If I can do that, then I know I can solve this equation for this vector, and I, that's going to tell me that this vector depends on these others in some way. So if I take this equation and I can find values for x1, x2, x3, x4 where they're not all zero, okay, that's the key thing. If they all have to be zero, then there's no way for me to write one in terms of the others. Okay? If just one of these things is not zero, then I can solve for it and everything is good.